Hello ladies and gentlemen, and this is, we have another video for you. I hope you are all feeling well on this lovely sunshiny day. Or at least it was a lovely sunshiny day in here where I am in England. We have yet another dinosaur video or presentation. And the start attraction today is going to be Concavenator, meaning humpbacked hunter from Cuenca, or Cuenca, however you want to pronounce it. This was a medium sized carnivore and had a truly fascinating and interesting appearance, which we shall look at as the video progresses. But well, for now, just enjoy this beautiful, lovely image of Concavenator. Concavenator is a genius of theropod dinosaur that lived 130 million years ago, during the early Cretaceous period within a stage known as the Baremian. With some noteworthy, noteworthy dinosaurs that are active for this stage being a lovely Iguanodon, Baryonyx, Amargosaurus and Eutoraptor. In terms of size though, Concavenator was a medium sized carnivore being around 6 metres long or to 20 foot long, so it was quite a hefty animal and 2 to 3 tonnes in weight, making it a decent sized medium carnivore among different theropod dinosaurs. Concavenator was actually found in a Las Holas, I think I pronounced it, or Las Hogas fossil site located in Spain near the city of Cuenca when it gets its name a hunter from Cuenca. Concavenator, as you might expect, was a carnivore, judging by its lovely big teeth and its athletic build. And it would have hunted other dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures within the area, or anything it can generally get hold of. Well here we got a lovely little infographic for you ladies and gentlemen, showing where Concavenator Corvaticus was actually found within the world at the time. Well you can see it was actually located within Spain, in the region of Cuenca, when it gets its name from. But moving on, the fossil of Concavenator was first discovered in a Los Hayas fossil site by paleontologists from the Autonomous University of Madrid and the National University of Distance Learning. The names of these lovely paleontologists who made the discovery are Jose Luis Sanz and Francisco Ortega. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The Las Hayas fossil site has also unearthed another interesting dinosaur, which I shall tell you about in the following slide. We'll try not to get too ahead of ourselves, but isn't this a beautiful, lovely, another beautiful image of Concavenator? I'm liking the feather or hair like protrusions that are emerging from the spine and tail region. And here we have the other dinosaur which was found in the same fossil site of Concavenator in a Las Hoyas fossil site. This is Pelicanmimus, or Pelicanmimus, meaning as you would think, Pelican Mimic. Using the word Mimus to mimic, there are several different dinosaurs that have also got the same like end their name you could say we got Sucominus which means cro crocodile mimic which was a large theropod I think it was related in the Spinosaurid family and we also have I think it was the pre it was the previous dinosaur I did in a previous video was Gallimimus which means chicken mimic but you will find loads I actually find there's quite a wide range of different uh, dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures after you like using the word Mimus it's quite a useful little thing well, this interesting little creature is surely is indeed very, very fascinating. I recommend anyone with a vast interest in paleontology or just natural history to have a cheeky look at it. I might even plan on doing this animal in a previous, not a previous, a future video, I should say. Here we have a beautifully computer generated image of Concavenator done by Masato Hattori. I will, all of these pictures in this presentation are referenced at the end of the video, so. I think Masato Hattori, a lot of his images are on Deviant Art, so if you, have, you find some of these pictures truly striking, I suggest that you check them out. But moving on, one of the most striking characteristics of Concavenator is the prominent protrusion above its hips that is caused by an extension of two prescarable vertebrae, if I'm pronouncing that right, I apologise if I'm not. It's speculated by scientists that this would have actually supported a, either a hump or sail like structure. And some theories on the use of this structure involve it being used to enhance thermoregulation, which is very similar to a lovely prehistoric creature known by the name of Dimetrodon, which I covered in a previous video, although it was not that lengthy, and Spinosaurus, which also covered in a previous video, which also was at a pretty short length. Because when I first started out doing a few of these videos, I literally did not plan them that well, to be honest. But I have a lot more structure to them now. But thermoregulation is important because a lot of reptiles and creatures in general have to warm up. So by thermoregulating early in the morning, they were able to get a head start on potential prey. And I think saying like a sail gives them probably more, I'd say surface area would be a good word for it. So they can 
uh, manage to receive more body heat and sunlight and heat, be more active generally during the day. I like to think my science is not the worst, but that is what I would go with if that was an actual adaptation from for concavenator. I would say it is thermoregulation, that's my personal opinion. But another possible function of this hump would be actually be it could be used to survive long periods of time without food, very similar to camelids or just camels in general, as their humps are used to store fatty like adipose tissue for long durations of time. Because that's the urban common like urban myth that the camel hump has water in it. It doesn't as layers of fat. That's how they can survive for a lot longer. So perhaps this real name should be camel conveyor or camel conator or something along the lines of that. But that is an awful joke, and I will move on. I apologise for that. Here we got a nice little image of concavenator on the right side of the screen, ladies and gentlemen. Quite an actual little bit of a menacing image, I would say. But here are some delightful dino facts for you to enjoy and indulge in, ladies and gentlemen. Concavenator is classified within the same family as a very famous dinosaur by the name of Allosaurus, with the family being known as, wait for it, the Carcarontosauridae. The Carcarontosauridae. I think if I'm pronouncing that right, but I might be wrong. Concavenator is believed to possess quill knobs, which may indicate conc Concavenator might have actually been yet another feathered dinosaur, because more and more of them are coming out of the woodwork, it seems. Until scientists, though, or paleontologists uncover a completely preserved concavenator specimen, all this talk of feathers, of feathers, of feathers remains a mystery still. And I also welcome Luca to this video currently because he is currently scratching himself erratically, and he just wanted to say hi, I think. But Luca is my cat, by the way. Here we are. This is probably arguably one of my most famous images I've chosen to use for this presentation. I mean, here we have a very interesting image of a concavenator hunting a poor pele pelicomimus. I think that's how you pronounce it, pelicomimus. But I do suppose it needs to eat its uh, fill, and this unfortunate pelicomimus is on the dinner menu. Speaking about feathers though, again, concavenator did possess structures that appear to be quill knobs, which were found on the owner of the forearms. But due to this, scientists do believe that concavenator may have actually sp displayed sparse proto feathers which are like early feathers by the way, from its lower arm region. Unfortunately, no feathers are yet to be found fully preserved, as I mentioned before, because a full specimen of concavenator with a full like feather-like uh, preservation is yet to be uncovered, so it's still speculation. I also like in this image though how the pelican mimus has actually been done so it's feathered, because there's a lot more speculation that Apart from the raptor species or like of dinosaurs, or like, Dromo, like Dromaeosaurus, Utahraptor, Gigantoraptor, Velociraptor, and Deinonychus, you were seeing a, we all know, have a rough idea they were feathered, but we're seeing a lot more large theropod dinosaurs appearing appearing now with feathers. There's a lot of reason to believe that Tyrannosaurus rex, the famous dinosaur from Jurassic Park, and obviously a lot of people's childhood might have actually had feathers. Let's try and pitch that now. It's quite an amusing little mental image. I can you imagine if like sauropods, uh, ceratopsians, and as animals such as like Stegosaurus had feathers? Because I have trouble imagining that. But as we go, we delve more, 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 more into paleontology, and I know if more species and the technology becomes more advanced, we might actually find out the answer to this: what dinosaurs did have feathers and what don't. Concavenator or camelcanator, as I like to call it is a truly fascinating and extraordinary animal that we have much more still to learn about it seems. As always though, I hope you enjoyed this little video presentation and if you did find it interesting, please like the video and comment your feedback because I like to hear people's feedback on what could be improved or what possible other species I could include on the list or just general ideas. And you can join the Raptor Pack today by subscribing ladies and gentlemen and I hope you have a pleasant evening or day or whatever wherever you are in the world. Goodbye for now.